So good evening YouTube, welcome back to the Airborne Lawyer YouTube channel and this evening we're picking up the TBM 930 World Tour from Santa Monica in California. Here is our TBM 930 just in front of us here and this is Santa Monica Airport where we landed last time around. Now if you saw the live stream few weeks back uh, you will have seen that the weather we landed in was pretty horrific. It was really low cloud, really thick cloud, we hardly saw anything of uh, Los Angeles and the surrounding area at all. Um, but the good news is that um, we can take a look uh, at Los Angeles this time with this beautiful drone footage which I took a little while ago. So this is the uh, this is the scene down at Santa Monica Beach and then Santa Monica Boulevard which heads all the way into the city. speed up the drone a little bit there because everything in Los Angeles is just massive. So now we're getting into the interesting bit. This is where Santa Monica Boulevard splits and heads towards Beverly Hills. This is Beverly Wilshire. You can see the, well, this Rodeo Drive in fact. So you can see the Beverly Wilshire Hotel at the end there. There's some incredibly eye-watering expensive shops just down there on Rodeo Drive. And then the other side of Santa Monica Boulevard, again, are some of the huge houses in Beverly Hills. A little further to the west is Hollywood Hills with a rather famous sign over there. All very, very nice. I have been to Los Angeles. And that haze is, from my real world experience, uh, pretty characteristic of this metropolis. So flying right over to the downtown now, where there's a collection of skyscrapers. But as you can tell, it is just a vast urban sprawl. And we are just at one corner of it, really, because uh, we're just over at uh, Santa Monica. And uh, that's just, sort of, well, kind of over in the west of the city, in the northwest of the city, I suppose. Not that far from the Californian foothills. And today what we're just going to be doing, if I just switch over to my Navigraph screen is we're just going to be flying VFR up the coast. So we're going from Santa Monica down here, just along the coast, no need for any detailed flight plan, all the way up to Silicon Valley. So we are flying to the southern tip or the, the uh, well around the Palo Alto area, the, the southern area of the San Francisco Bay. And if I just flip over to the flight chart you can see this little airport here called San Carlos KSQL or KSQL and that is where we are going to be landing today it's a tiny little airport and I think that will be a pretty authentic place to take the TBM uh, today so uh, just a quick look at what's going on right now uh, in the real world of aviation just so we can make sure our uh, takeoff runway is correct so this is Los Angeles here you can already see planes coming in flying from the east to the west and checking Santa Monica uh, weather information you can see here that the winds are blowing at 230 degrees at 8 knots and the conditions are otherwise clear and the temperature is 18 degrees very very nice indeed 
So that all checks out with what we're looking at here in the sim. Beautiful clear weather, barely a cloud in the sky, a little bit of atmospheric haze but nothing more than that. And um, we will therefore be taking off on uh, runway 21, uh, which uh, will be heading into that eight knot wind. So as I say, not really much of a uh, of a flight plan. I have put in Santa Monica and uh, San Carlos into the uh, into the flight management computer. So on the left hand side of the navigation display, you can see that straight line. But we're not going to take a straight line. We will follow up the coast and see how we get on. Uh, otherwise, so we're pretty much ready to go. I am on that sim. Uh, I'm tuned into uh, Unicom at the moment because uh, there are currently no controllers covering um, Santa Monica Tower, although I noticed that in the time since we've started this video, uh, Los Angeles Center has come online. So uh, we can dial them up and uh, we can hopefully get a clearance from them uh, very, very shortly. Uh, so first of all, let's um, get the engine started. That would be a good thing to do. So auxiliary boost pump goes on and we'll turn on the ignition. And what I'm now looking for here is NG of 13, which is just indicated there, which is happening. It's pretty noisy, which means I've not closed the door. So let's just do that. And lock it. There we are. And once that NG hits the green bar, as it does there, I'm now going to move the throttle lever across. And I'm going to turn on the pitot heats. And the bleeds. We can now switch the auxiliary boost pump to automatic. Turn on the APs, fuel selectors to automatic, hit the switch button and turn on the passenger oxygen. So that's all good. And I think what I ought to do now is tune in to Los Angeles Center and get ourselves a, a clearance to fly VFR up the coast. So 135550 is the frequency. Over to tower, Skywest 1331. And let's, uh, we'll, we'll call them shortly once we hear a gap in the, uh, in, in the transmissions. Just. Departure Delta 3722 with you, uh, climbing to 5000. Just uh, check all the controls whilst I'm waiting. So they're all fine. LA Center Delta 3722 with you. And we'll also put out. Delta 3722, flaps. radar contact, 3600, climbing to 8330. Right back going up to 330, Delta 3722. Wolf was calling. Los Angeles Center, American 1226, inspiration. Mary, all right, gotcha. Right, control 26, make sure you got the correct squawk from the PDC first. Ah, oh, stand by. Stand by 2318, radar contact, bottom of 390. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and uh, request clearance at this stage. Los Angeles Center, Golf Tango Echo Whiskey Alpha, type TBM 930 on the ground at Santa Monica. We're looking for a VFR clearance uh, departing west. Silence. American 1226 remote fee. Ready taxi. So, let me just check. Yeah, my uh, microphone is working according to my viewpoint. And American 1226, 
Information, Mike, Romeo 26 right, taxi via Bravo. 26 right, taxi via Bravo, Mike. Let's do a quick radio check and see if that works. Los Angeles Center, Golf Tango Echo Whiskey Alpha, uh, radio check. Five. Golf Tango Echo Whiskey Alpha is type TBM 930 on the ground at Santa Monica. Do I need to call you for VFR clearance? That's correct. I request VFR clearance departure to the west. Okay, Squawk 7165, taxi number 21, alternative 3004 for Golf Tango Echo Whiskey Alpha. Squawking 7165 and departing runway 21, copy the taxi instructions, Golf Tango Echo Whiskey Alpha. Okay, so uh, he's just given our score code, but I mean it's going to be fairly straightforward for us because it is, and I recommend you stay there. So maintain flight number two nine zero sixteen fifty three. We're just flying up the coast, and we won't trouble him too much, I suspect. Let's just take a quick look at our chart. Los Angeles Center, Alaska four seventy one, taxi runway two six right with Mike. Alaska four seventy one, thanks to Mike. Number two six right, taxi via Bravo. Uh, 26 right, Bravo, Alaska 471. I'm quickly, just going to turn down my V pipe a little bit because it's very loud in my in my ear right now. So, uh, if you look at the taxi chart just here, you can see uh, taxiway Alpha there, which is just over to our left, and that's what we're going to take all the way up to runway 21, just up here, and we'll then call him for departure clearance. Roger 131, contact tower, good day. So I'm Tower, good day, American Water One. Release the parking brake, and we can call back. Charlie Fox, start, uh, uh, call the Charlie, pushback. The tug. San Diego winds are three zero zero one zero altimeter three zero zero five. Expect the low clouds are on the two. And break. I'll turn on the taxi lights as well at this stage. Uh, altimeter three zero zero five. Are you able to get a visual for two seven? Okay. Expect visual approach for two seven. Now let's uh, just see what happens here. Because very often, the guy with the pushback appears to be slightly suicidal and walks right through the propellers before finally realizing his mistake. There we go. Okay, we're now pushing back. Chapter 2986, radar contact, flight of the 340. Chapter 2986, can you fly the Hollywood 1 arrival? Hey, Chapter 2986. All right, uh, proceed on the Eastwood. That will do. Hollywood 1 arrival, please, thanks. Eastwood, Hollywood 1 arrival, Chapter 2986. Okay, November so 558 Sierra Mike with you at Paso Robles. So just give ourselves a little bit of power. And I'm just out of my airspace, but how can I help you? Uh, I'll be flying through. If you see my flight plan there, I'll be flying around your airspace. Would you like me to uh, here have is a taxiway squat alpha? Or just fly Unicom? Uh, well, depends on what you want to do. Are you IFR or VFR? I'm sorry. I'll be VFR. Okay, well, then you don't need to talk to me unless you want flight following or some kind of a radar advisory. Uh, you don't need to talk to me. Very well, I'll stay out of here. Nice talking with you now. Good day. Five five eight. See you, Mike. Thank you. Good afternoon, Center United. Forty five twenty two three point six for five. At forty five twenty two. Good afternoon, Squawk seven one one. It's really busy on the ATC this afternoon. Seven. So it's quarter past nine in the UK, which must mean it's around about what, quarter past one in the afternoon in Santa Monica. I don't know what that aircraft is doing just over there. I'm going to assume that that is a little bit of malfunctioning AI. Oh dear, oh dear. That doesn't look good at all. An American 1226 holding short, 2 American 1226, only 2 6 right, clear for takeoff, and we're able to fall. Right, 2 6 right, clear for takeoff, American 1226. 
United 4522, turn left direct Clipper, resume the orchid fire departure. Left direct Clipper, resume the departures, uh, 4522. Okay, so I now need to just request my uh, takeoff clearance. Uh, LS Center, this is United 719, uh, just for your information, we have a sim freeze. Fairbank 1653, descend to the round with one arrival, expect number 26 left information, Mike. And runners, uh, this is weather runners, uh, one uh, arrival, expecting uh, 26 left, uh, 1653. Southwest 1901, descend with Angel 4, arrival, expect number 24 right, information, November. Just a case, really, of waiting for a gap in the chatter to get a word in. Southwest 1901. Golf Tango Echo Whiskey Alpha ready for departure. We're on way 21 at Santa Monica. Golf Tango Echo Whiskey Alpha, flying 270. Actually, no, run 21, line up and wait, stand by. 21, line up and wait, Golf Tango Echo Whiskey Alpha. Right, so it sounds like he might assign me a heading. but he just wants me to line up and wait, wait to start with. So he's clearly quite busy. So I'll just hold on here. Got everything else on, so get the strobes on. Tampus 1901, are you there? Get the uh, landing lights on as well. And now we just, uh, we'll just wait for our departure clearance. Ask for 71, go ahead. Tampus 1901. Pretty short runway here at Santa, Santa, Santa Monica. Monica but more than long enough November. for the TBM 930. Nothing coming through, say again. Number 7, Papa, is confirming the altimeter is 3001, runway 16 right, clear land, wind variable at 4. Southwest 1901, uh, yes, sorry, my mi microphone is off. Go ahead. 3001 on the altimeter and uh, 16 right, clear land for 7, Papa, whiskey. Golf Tango, Echo Whiskey, Alpha, flighting 270, runway 21, clear for takeoff, winds are 23013. Flighting 270 degrees and cleared for takeoff, Golf Tango, Echo Whiskey, Alpha. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly uh, set the 270 in my Southwest autopilot, one, descend via the Angel four and, and runway two four eight. away we go. Runway 248, descend via Angel arrival, Southwest 191. Los Angeles, Southern Alaska, 471, Horn short, runway 26 right. 80 knots, 90 knots, and away we go. Delta 1901 and confirm runway 24 right and 25 right. Clear up. Runway 24 right. 24 right, thank you. And we'll now turn to that heading at 270 degrees. Five, five, five. You can contact SoCal approach 119.63 landing. And I'm climbing up today well, to 5,000 uh, feet. That's it, five, 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 five. So we can get a nice view along the coast. Over to Sokana Approach, 119 Nato, have a name. There's the California one, foothills two, over there. Uh, two, six, right, clear for takeoff, but very well at four. Five, uh, right, Switch over to flight level change mode before. so that we maintain around about 140 American knots. 12, 26, contact 9, 000, climb and take I'm sorry, Ryan, 12, 26, can you read that? Climb and maintain flight level 280. 12, 26, uh, what you requested to zero, zero, seven, five. Oh, sorry, yes, you so did. Let's uh, eight, two, get zero. the autopilot on at this stage. 200, 12, 26. Which will just take us all the way up to 5,000 feet. Take in the yeah, flaps as well. Now. Descend via the Hollywood One arrival. Expect number two five left. You can see just over there. Set via the Hollywood One arrival. The uh, 
pick up the number of Jet Blue 29. This is a large expanse of Los Angeles International. Thankfully, we're keeping well out of the way. Meanwhile, over here, getting a nice view of the Hollywood, uh, sorry, of the California foothills. In fact, I suppose this is is this still the Hollywood Hills Roger, over here? One, two, two, point eight. And the Californian foothills, I suppose, UPS are this of hills two, slightly two, more in the distance. Golf Tango, Echo Whiskey Alpha, radar contact. Now you can resume all navigation. Squawk clear for one two zero zero. Have a good flight. Bye bye. One two zero zero on the squawk and resume all nav. Uh, uh, Golf Tango, Echo Whiskey Alpha. Thanks for the service. So. Basically, we can do whatever we like now. Uh, we are going to switch back over to Unicom. And follow the coast up all the way to Palo Alto. So what we're just going to do is tweak the out uh, the heading on the autopilot a little bit so that we can get the uh, best views. Uh, this is probably Malibu down here, I think. Let's take a look outside. You can see just down there, there's a road right along the Pacific Coast, which is, funnily enough, the Pacific Coast Highway, Route 1, uh, which uh, I have driven up. I've driven from Los Angeles to San Francisco along that road, and it is beautiful, absolutely beautiful. It took a lot longer, though, uh, to drive it than it will take us to fly it this afternoon. Or this evening, depending on where you are. Looking back, again, you can see the haze of Los Angeles in the distance there. Fast disappearing behind us. And there is the TBM up there with the sun. So the TBM World Tour continues. And the question is where to go after Silicon Valley, really, and San Francisco. We've done all of South America. I've been through a lot of North America, certainly down the east coast. Now it's a question of where to go after this. Do I continue straight up the coast or do I look at going maybe inland and taking a look at Yosemite? I haven't really decided just yet. I haven't decided. see here on the main navigation display just in the center is that we are flying over relatively low-lying terrain obviously down near the uh, coast it's relatively low-lying where you see the red that indicates higher terrain and then it's a uh, sort of a sliding scale so green I can clear the kind of yellowy amber color I'd have to be exercise caution over and then the red I wouldn't be able to get over so I need to uh, avoid And 
all of that checks out when you then look over the win look out the window and look over towards uh, the foothills. Just getting back to Navigraph. Let's see what we're going to do here is um, first of all come to Oxnard and Ventura and Santa Barbara. If I put on the little marker you can see we are already making significant progress towards Oxnard and then Santa Barbara will be just beyond that. So just jumping outside again. Uh, they are just coming up around this next bend really. Just over there, you can see uh, Santa Cruz Island. And beyond it, another, another island, which is called Channel Islands National Park. In the UK, we have the Channel Islands, Jersey, Guernsey, etc. But uh, this is slightly different. I don't think anyone actually lives there. I think it's just a just a national park. In the other direction over there, I think you can just see Catalina Island in the distance which is uh, well it's just off the coast of Long Beach so that's a bit further south if I just raise up a bit there we are head over here So this is Oxnard coming up here. What we can see down there is Point Magoo Navy Exchange. Uh, sorry, uh, it, yes, it's uh, it's the Point Magoo Naval Base down there. Just checking Google Maps as I go. Naval Air Station. That's what they call it in the US. And then beyond that, we can now start to see Oxnard appearing. This is the most populous city in Ventura County in California. And the 22nd most populous city in California itself. It's a port city, which you can kind of tell by looking down there. And the military has a presence in Oxnard as well. It is also a trading port, and you can kind of see a container ship by the looks of it just down there.
So we continue now along the coast from Oxnard up to Santa Barbara, which is not at all far. And just uh, switching over to, uh, to Navigraph. Santa Barbara is next. I uh, I have been to Santa Barbara. In fact, when I drove up the Pacific Coast Highway over ten years ago, I uh, I stopped over in Santa Barbara on my way up the coast. It's a really nice place, and it has a fantastic, or certainly had when I went there, fantastic board games shop on the main drag in Santa Barbara, which was just jam packed with board games. It was coming up to Christmas, so I was looking for something that might be good for a kind of family board game. And I remember the uh, the people in the shop were extremely excited to present me with a whole array of different options. So the flying here is extremely straightforward, really. It's just 5,000 feet, nice steady speed. I'm just going to pull it back a little bit on the throttle. Just fuel economy ready, if nothing else. Got a ground speed of 228 knots. Do have a bit of a headwind at the moment of 15 knots. do is just uh, tune into a few uh, nearby beacons so that we can just get a distance check. So, uh, well, Santa Monica is behind us now. We have flown so far 50 miles since leaving Santa Monica. S is the San Marcos Santa Barbara VOR that is now just 22 miles in front of us so a nice little bit of flight navigation you can see down here RZS is 21.7 nautical miles on a bearing of 292 degrees so that's just pretty much straight in front of us and Santa Monica SMO is 51 and a half nautical miles behind us on a bearing of 95 degrees now with lots of jazzy screens and things like that it's, uh, it's easy to forget that you can use VORs very effectively to navigate It's also quite handy just to sort of cross check. And give yourself a distance uh, measurement as well. Of course in bad weather where you can't see anything, it becomes absolutely essential.
After Santa Monica, we're going to head up towards San Luis Obispo. And the VOR there is MQO. So just looking to see if that's on our nearest VOR list. There it is. So I might just tune that in now to our uh, NAV2 frequency. I'm not picking that up just yet. So here is Santa Barbara. Let's uh, jump out of the plane for a second. Again, you can see very clearly down there the Pacific Coast Highway leading the way, hugging that coastline, which it does for such a vast proportion uh, of the entire coast. Santa Barbara Airport is uh, it's also down there somewhere. Yeah, you can just see the airport just in the distance there. It has a really nice beach and sort of bay area in Santa Barbara. Just going to give us a little bit more altitude now as we're getting a little bit close to these hills. Just take ourselves up to 7,000 feet. There's the beach just behind us, and the downtown just under the left-hand wing. bit of turbulence probably because we are starting to go over the hills just a couple of thousand feet below us pretty rugged countryside around here and actually the Pacific Coast Highway which we were just looking at does branch away from the coast for a little while and it comes slightly inland, heads down the coast a little bit and then cuts through these hills uh, and then it heads up towards Lompoc and Guadeloupe and, uh, and Morro Bay and so on. So just Going back once again to our Navigraph screen, you can see that we have uh, now, oh, let's just get rid of that segment, just slightly come inland and are heading up this way towards uh, San Luis Obispo, which is up here. Slightly clearer on the world map. In fact, just talking about the Pacific Coast Highway, you can see it there. So it just comes along the coast and then it heads inland. And you can pick it up again up near, uh, up near San Luis Obispo. So 
also just take a quick look over at uh, Simaware. So this is the map of all the aircraft currently uh, flying on VATSIM. Pretty busy. Everywhere, in fact. Very, very busy over here in Europe. Uh, but when you come into California, you can see there we are, just down there. So you can see the route that we've taken so far from Santa Monica straight up the coast and now inland. The scenery is absolutely fantastic. Let's see if we can uh, find out which lake that is. So where are we? Give me on Google Maps. Uh, Santa Barbara is there. So that is Lake Kachuma. So close to the Pacific Ocean, but uh, just tucked behind the mountains. suddenly a lot flatter. Just a short stretch there of uh, mountainous terrain and then it's much flatter. But yeah, it is all pretty rugged around here, isn't it? Of course, this all lies on the San Andreas Fault, which goes right up the west coast of the US. Creating the Rocky Mountains and various other geographical features, including those that we're seeing here. And of course, it's the San Andreas Fault that is to blame for various earthquakes. actually done a lot less VFR flying than you might expect doing this world tour on the TVM 130. Sometimes it's been necessary, certainly when I was flying through parts of Peru. Uh, in the mountains it was uh, impossible to fly on instruments, it was all done by sight alone. But overall I have done a lot of IFR flying on the TVM 930 World Tour, but this was a fantastic opportunity to look more out the window than at all the dials and screens in front of me. And it is pretty beautiful, and we've also got some good weather for it. This is, uh, this is real world weather, of course. You can actually see the line of the ocean. So behind us is Santa Monica. And then that's where 
the coast starts to bend round to the north. I think that might be called Point Magoo, possibly. Again, just uh, switching over to Navigraph, you can see exactly where we are. So we just cut this corner a little bit and heading up towards Santa Maria. And then we'll head on to San Luis Obispo, head round Big Sur, up to Monterey, Monterey past Santa Cruz, and then into uh, San Jose and Palo Alto. So I guess we all do it differently, but this is pretty much how I sim a lot of the time. Just sit here, <laughs> looking out the window, flying, letting myself believe that I could be doing this for real. And uh, today is Easter Monday, so I haven't been at work today, but it has it certainly is a good way to wind down, I find. If you have a busy day at work, then you just turn on the sim and do some basic escapism. And just go wherever you like. And particularly during the pandemic, I have found flight simming to be really, really useful as a way to get out the house when at certain points it was illegal to go out the house well not quite illegal but you know very very restricted that in fact was why I started doing the TPM 930 World Tour in the first place and uh, you can see all of the previous episodes of the tour on the channel. Tour right the way through South America is there to see. There's also the tour down the east coast of the US and across the Caribbean. And what feels like a very long time ago, at one stage, this tour was in the UK. So that is Santa Maria Airport just down there. I'm just going to turn a little bit to the right to uh, head. Oh, I'm turning my altitude selector rather than my heading. Let's head uh, a bit more northwest now. So you can see this bay just in front of us. And that is where Pismo Beach lies, which is a really, really long stretch of beach just before you get to San Luis Obispo. And the other side of it is then Morro Bay. So Santa Maria Airport down there. There's a museum of flight down there, apparently. And there's a couple of hotels, but it doesn't look like it's a major airport, from what I can tell. Probably just a regional airport with uh, a few flights like this one coming in from time to time, I expect. Starting to see the golden sands there of Pismo Beach just appearing.
The other thing I remember about doing the journey up the Pacific Coast Highway is just how vast the farmland is around here. I remember particularly up near Monterey, I think it was a place called Watson. Watson or Watsonville near Monterey. Let's have a quick look on Yeah, Watsonville, just uh, just between Monterey and Santa Cruz. There were these enormous fields that just had, just went on forever and were just growing cabbages or whatever. And they just went on for mile after mile. You get a slightly different view of it when you're up at 7,000 feet, but even so you can see these fields are just vast. Coming up on the coast again now, so I'm just going to turn a little bit further to the north once again. Three two five degrees. We want to be able to keep a decent bit of visibility out the left hand window. I remember making a quick stop at Pismo Beach and getting this sense that the beach went on as far as the eye could see. And you can get a sense of that just here because it just stretches right the way down. We have only been flying for about 20 minutes, half hour or so, but uh, if you travel by road, this feels substantially further away from Los Angeles than it, uh, than it feels by plane. It feels much more remote, or I, I thought so anyway. So that's uh, Oceano County, a uh, little airstrip down there. Just uh, check that uh, on, uh, on Navigraph. So we're just passing this tiny little airport here. And then we should see San Luis Obispo. Just over here somewhere. Mm, not just yet. Yeah, it's funny to think in real life I have been down there, just in that little area somewhere. Stopped and grabbed a quick cup of coffee before getting back onto the uh, Pacific Coast Highway. Just checking uh, our primary flight display here. You can now see that RZS, which was the VOR we tuned into at Santa Barbara, is now 57.4 miles behind us. And MQ, uh, MQO, which is the uh, San Luis Obispo Morro Bay VOR, is just 8 miles away. So it's got to be down there somewhere. Suggesting it's over this way. Oh, there it is. We're right on top of it.
So that is then Morrow Bay over there. And then the coast heads up towards Big Sur. And we can tune into the Big Sur VOR. So let's again just go back to our Navigraph screen. And Big Sur BSR is 114.00. So looking at, uh, just coming here onto our nearest VOR list, let's have a look and see if we can see BSR. There it is, I'm going to tune that now into our NAV1 and hopefully we will get a reading off that fairly soon. Up near Monterey is the Salinas VOR, which is SNS. So we'll also tune that one, which tells us we are 90 miles south of Monterey. So making really good progress here. In flying terms, that's really not far at all. Once we're at Monterey, we will be starting to think about our approach into uh, into San Carlos. So San Carlos. Let's just take a quick look uh, over at Google Maps again. Uh, San Carlos is a tiny, tiny airport. Oh, oh, gone well past it there, here we are. Tiny airport in the thick of Silicon Valley. And it's right here. And if you look on Google Maps, you can even tell down here we've got a few TBMs. So I just thought this is the airport to fly to within the greater San Francisco Bay Area. It's just south of San Francisco, but you wouldn't really fly a TBM 930 into the international airport here. Uh, so to keep things realistic, we'll fly it into San Carlos a little way south. Now I'm flying this VFR of course, so there's no charts that I'm following, I'm just doing this entirely uh, visually. And my plan is to continue up the coast, let's just stop that alarm, apologies. Uh, my plan is to follow the coast up, so we are just flying over San Luis Obispo, there's Morro Bay which I mentioned a few moments ago, then we have Big Sur just here, and there's Monterey, Watsonville. My plan is to fly through what I believe is called Scotts Valley, just here. There, is, yeah, it says Scotts Valley there. And come into San Jose. So I'm just going to follow this line, this sort of valley through here, into San Jose and find the Highway 101. So I'll probably give San Jose International Airport a wide berth. But if I see uh, this airport, which is uh, Moffat Federal Airfield, um, I will know I'm right next to the 101. So the 101's down here. This is sort of in the Sunnyvale area. And I'm then going to follow the 101 all the way up. Oh, past Ikea. There we go. That'll be handy. And follow it all the way up. It'll bend round. I'm likely to see some kind of lighter coloured areas here after Dumbarton Bridge. Keep following the 101. And then I should see the airport. But it, it might be quite hard to spot. 
because this is all sort of urban down here and it's a tiny tiny airport so follow the 101 look for these lighter kind of salty colored flats here and then look for the airport uh, as soon as it appears planning probably to descend down to about a thousand feet and then just play it by ear but it could be uh, it might, might be quite challenging this one we shall we shall see so let's just cut back to the sim and we are now just a little way north of Morrow Bay. And we are also getting a reading off the Big Sur VOR. So just looking down here, you can see we're now 51 miles from Big Sur, BSR, with 74, uh, 74 miles from Salinas, which is just up near Monterey. So making really good progress here. Once again, you can just see down there Pacific Coast Highway and this I recall was one of the most beautiful bits of the whole Pacific Coast trip because once you headed out towards the Big Sur you uh, once you headed out towards Big Sur you, you, you just followed the coast up this winding road along the coast for miles so I've driven along to the Mediterranean coast in the south of France, for instance, where you get a, you know similar stretches where the road's quite close to the cliff edge and it kind of winds around, a few hairpin bends and so on, and that might go on for you know ten miles uh, between you know, <laughs> Cannes and Nice or something like that. Uh, this is this is on an altogether different scale. I, I remember sort of just winding through these beautiful uh, cliff roads leading down to the, you know, with, with all the hillsides leading down to the Pacific Ocean and this fantastic sunset developing over to our left-hand side. And it went on for, I think, 80 to 90 miles all the way up to Monterey. And that's what we're about to see now. that Pacific Coast Highway, as I say, it comes inland from Santa Barbara and cuts up towards Lompoc and San Luis Obispo. You kind of see bits of the coast, but you are going through a fair bit of inland kind of uh, towns en route. And then finally, north of San Luis Obispo and Pismo Beach, etc., you, you, uh, you go right back out to the coast again. Taking a look over at the other side of the plane. Still a lot of rugged countryside out here. Now on the one hand I think that must be amazing to go hiking in down there. On the other hand I have and forgive me if I'm oversharing, but I have a terrible fear of snakes. And all I can think of when I look at that kind of territory, knowing that it's California, is there's probably a whole load of rattlesnakes down there. <laughs> I've been to California twice, and both times I was, um, I was disturbed by rattlesnake-related nightmares. <laughs> I have no particular reason to be hugely fearful of snakes because I come from Cambridgeshire in the UK where if you ever come across a snake it's very likely to just be a grass snake which is effectively harmless. At worst it might be an adder which again is 
pretty harmless. Certainly not on the scale of a rattlesnake. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, I, I form a strong connection between rattlesnakes and California for some reason. Still nothing as bad as my fear of snakes when it comes to Australia. But that's probably because I used to watch too much Flying Doctors when I was a child. I don't know if anyone's read the Bill Bryson book where he travels through Australia, but um, he talks about the number of things in Australia that can kill you, and that resonates with me. Fantastic country, but so many deadly uh, insects, snakes, and other creatures. <laughs> see that coastline now starting to emerge which I mentioned a few moments ago where the road just ducks in and out of all these bluffs I think is the word as the coast weaves its way north and it just goes on and on and there's really not much here this isn't like the coast of uh, you know, southern France going into Italy and so on, where every few miles there's another significant town. There's really not much here. Again, it's almost quite surprising to think we're only sort of 40 minutes by plane down to uh, to Los Angeles from here. The huge urban metropolis of LA feels like another world to all this. So we're just going to turn a little bit more to the north again. You can just see the road down there. Jump outside the plane for a second so that we can see it a little bit more clearly. Oh, where are we? There we are. Yeah, there is the Pacific Coast Highway. And you can now see exactly what I was trying to describe a little while ago. A weaving road all the way along the coast. And we were really lucky when we did it. We went in the autumn and uh, had really good weather and an absolutely spectacular sunset. And of course the, the sunset was uh, to our left all the way up. Of course this is the uh, magic feature of Flight Sim to, uh, 2020, where you can take the drone out. So this is this has just been so such a game changer, I think, because you you really can see the world. You can do the flying, and you can see the world at the same time. Just jump back in the cockpit, just to uh, turn to the right by another five degrees or so. Just make sure we're hugging that coastline. Head back outside again.
do hit the subscribe button if you are enjoying this. I hope you are. The idea of this is that it's something relaxing to watch. Gives you a sense of being there for real. Even if you're just streaming a bit of YouTube on a quiet Easter Monday evening. You can see that Pacific Coast Highway right along the side of the coast there. And it just goes on and on. It goes further north than San Francisco. That's as far as I went with it. Now, I know I might be imagining this, but I, I actually think I can remember that bridge right there. I remember a long stretch where it sort of seemed to straighten up and then go across a bridge, which is right on top of the ocean. There's another one there. Yeah, I think I remember this area. Let's go back up to the plane. So we are pretty close now to uh, Monterey. If you just look on the navigation display, you can see KMR. Y just there, and Salinas just there. So KMRY is uh, is Monterey, so it's about 25, 30 miles away. Just 10 miles south now of Big Sur, which is right in front of us, really. Just turn another few degrees to the right. And then we will go across Monterey Bay, straight over to uh, Santa Cruz, and then we will cut in to San Jose and uh, into Palo Alto. So I can now see San Francisco is listed on one of our nearest VORs. Let's see how far away San Francisco is. We're not going quite as far as San Francisco, of course. I haven't got a reading off it just yet, but it's about 90... What's it saying? Yeah, 97 miles away. But we're not going up that far. Uh, give you a quick look at Navigraph again, just so you can catch up on where we've got to. So we made big progress now. We started down here in Santa Monica. You can't even see it; it's just tucked. It's hidden there. Um, and follow the coast up, and we are now all the way up here. It's coming over Big Sur. There is Monterey Bay. We'll then cut in to land at San Carlos. So I'm actually going to try tuning into the Moffat VOR, which is just here, uh, which is NUQ, because that will give us a decent measure of how far we've got to go to uh, San Carlos. Let's have a look and see if we can see that. There it is, NUQ, 77 miles, there we are. 
not too far to go. Remember this being a particularly scenic bit as well. So here you leave the coast a little bit. You can still see it coming along here. Oops. Uh, that's the wrong button. There we are. Uh, you can still see the coast, but you then come in land and go through this rather beautiful tree-lined area. Again, there is the Pacific Coast Highway continuing its route up and then coming out the other side and back out to the coast. Right, there we go. <laughs> I don't know why it's taken me so long to get back in the cockpit there. Um, right, let's turn towards Monterey now. Having passed Big Sur. Turn to heading 330 degrees. And I'm also going to descend back down to 5,000 feet as it's a bit more low lying. Just pull back on the speed and let the plane go down to 5,000 feet. What, 217 knots I've selected. Ooh, a bit of turbulence again here. So you can see Monterey now, which is just a few miles ahead of us. And then it stretches around the bay. Watsonville is just around there. That's where the enormous fields are that I remember seeing which just seemed to go on forever. I'm sure it was, I'm sure it was cabbages or something. It was, it was very famous for one thing in particular, I seem to recall. I'll just pop it into Google and see if I can see.
No, it's. Uh, I'm seeing lots of stuff about agriculture. It's clearly a huge agricultural city. But I seem to remember seeing. It was something like cabbages, I think. Cabbages or broccoli, something like that. And it just went on for miles. There was there were so many of them that you almost thought, how on earth can there be enough people to eat that many cabbages? So coming right over the top of Monterey and it's got a really nice downtown actually. Right, there we are. That's, uh, I don't know what's going on here with my views but uh, it's got a really nice downtown with this nice sort of pier. When I was there I remember uh, there were a whole load of seals uh, down by the pier or being fed. I think actually the pier that I'm thinking of is kind of slightly hidden by the water there, but it was just down there. I just remember the seals made a hell of a lot of noise. It was a really, really nice city. Seafood, a, a, a big part of life in Monterey. I remember having a really good meal out that night. Right, nearly there now. So we're just going to cross the bay and we will then be looking out for that gap to lead us through to San Jose. Uh, it's a sort of a valley roughly between well, yeah, just to the right of Santa Cruz. And Santa Cruz is pretty much just in front of us. Still not picking up anything for the VOR at Moffat. So let's try San Jose VOR. There we are, 38 miles. So not far at all. In fact, it's pretty much as far forward as Big Sur is back. Again, that's just how quick it is flying. side again. Yeah, so it's uh, it's just over here. 
that we're going to be flying through, I think. That slight dip in the middle, that is the valley that's going to take us over towards uh, San Jose. And here we are, here's the plane. Just over there. I've still got the landing lights on because I have uh, never gone above 10,000 feet. So let's just turn to the right slightly. Santa Cruz isn't a huge city, population of about 60,000 people, but it's a very popular tourist destination, big on surfing. And has some beautiful beaches, which we can see some bits of just down there. It's also quite an old city. It dates back to the late 18th century, founded by the Spanish. And that obviously gives it its Spanish name. So I'm now just going to start uh, coming down a little bit. I'm going to descend first of all to uh, 4,000 feet. See the shape of the valley right in front of me that I'm intending to follow. So uh, what we will just do is check out what the weather is doing over in uh, San Carlos. So here it is. Winds are calm. It's a bit overcast and we can see back on the sim you can see that the clouds are building up in front of us so that seems accurate and uh, the temperatures are 18 degrees. The altimeter is 3009, zero, zero, which I can just see down there on the Metar. So that means I'm going to land on the northbound runway, which runs roughly in that direction just there. Rather looks like this Cessna is doing a few circuits in real life, this is, uh, using the northbound runway. And jump back into the sim and see now we are making good progress through the valley just on the terrain map in the center here you can actually see the shape of that valley a little bit more with higher terrain to our left and right so I'm just going to turn again a few degrees to the right just to make sure we have a nice 
clear path through. Yeah, you really can see those clouds starting to build up. I'm just going to set the altimeter to 3009 so that we are at the correct temperature and pressure for San Carlos. Now, I am still on VATSIM. Uh, but if we take a look at SimAware, you can see there is very little else uh, in the skies at the moment uh, in this area. So everything, everything that there is is going into San Francisco International, just a little bit further up. So I will announce my intentions, I think, but uh, I don't need to worry about too much other traffic. But let's continue the descent down now. It's now flattening out. Um, now that we are into the Bay Area. So I'm going to take us down to 2,000 feet at this point because what I want to do is be able to see very clearly the Highway 101. out for here now. I can actually just see in the distance there is Moffat Field right over there. Just that runway there, that's Moffat and the 101 runs right along side that, uh, that airport, this side of the airport. Over here should be able to see San Jose International I think over there. Yeah, just over there, look. So we'll steer clear of that. And I'm just going to head towards Moffat Field now. And find the 101. At this point it almost looks like I'm coming to Moffat, but I'm not going to. I think it's a military base, Moffat. see that it really is more overcast the further up towards San Francisco that we get. So the water that we can see just in front of us here is the very bottom of San Francisco Bay. And this is Sunnyvale, just down here. And let's start now turning to pick up the 101. You can see it there actually. So it is the highway which is running right next to those runways and then off into the distance. So that's what I'm going to be following from here. Just going to keep it out the left hand side of the uh, plane so I can see it. Still on autopilot for the moment. 
There's the 101. There's the runways at Moffat. Now I'm going to follow this in. Now there is Palo Alto Airport along the way here as well. But we won't be landing there. I like the fact that the ICAO code for uh, San Carlos is... Uh, K sequel. I assume that's got that's that's a that's an homage to its uh, links to the software world. There's Palo Alto just down there. Now we're right on top of the 101. Just going to come down a bit now to 1,000 feet. And at this point, I am going to turn off the oil damper and turn off the autopilot. I'll turn off the flight directors as well. So I can see now these white salty coloured flats just in front. Oh gosh. <laughs> okay sudden change in the real world weather or certainly as far as flight sim is concerned um, so I can see those salty flats I'm thinking that is the ones that we are looking for so I'm going to pull back on the speed I'm now just following the 101 round and I'm expecting to suddenly see it in front of me Continuing my descent, albeit very gradually. I think... No, I was going to say I think I might be able to see it, but I don't think I can just yet. So let's just keep going for now. Let's put the flaps out. full flaps and we'll put the landing gear down as well now right I think I can see it now I think it is just over here it's going to take this very easy Yeah, okay, that's definitely the runway, I think. Just looking to maintain 85 all the way down. I think there are a couple of Pappy lights at the side of the runway there. 
One red, one white. Two red. Yes, so there definitely are. Here we are. I'll just let it go now. God, this is a short runway. Oof. There we go. Not too bad at all. And we'll pull over here. So I can turn the landing lights off, turn the strobes off. just park up over here. There we go. Parking brakes can go on. And we can start turning everything off. So, pitot heats can go off. Bleeds can go off. The auxiliary boost pump can go off. APs. Taxi lights and engine. We can then just open up the door. So, thank you uh, for watching this. I hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, at the beginning of my next episode or live stream, we will head up from here into San Francisco to see yet another great world city as we continue our journey up the west coast of the US. Uh, but for now, do keep an eye out for more short and long haul flying here on the Airborne Lawyer YouTube channel on both Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 and on Prepare3D. And I will speak to you very, very soon. Thanks for watching.